Hello and welcome everyone to episode 8 of Chess Endgame Tactics in which some type of tactic is used to gain advantage or avoid defeat in the endgame. So take a look at this position and see if you can figure out uh, with white to move what would be best in this position. Uh, so if you need more time pause the video. Uh, if not let's take a look at it here all right so if i turn on the analysis the lines and evaluation uh, it looks like the game is headed to a draw but uh, it's kind of tricky here so black is ahead by this extra pawn and he has these two passed pawns here but white is able to hold the draw uh, with this surprising move well maybe not so surprising as there's a tactic involved here so if white plays rook to c6 uh, we have this untouchable rook here uh, because if we take a look at what would happen if the rook were to be captured with b takes c6 then pawn recaptures now white has this pair of past bishops, or excuse me, past pawns here uh, that will move forward and the rook will not be able to stop both of them. So an example may be, um, you know, let's say the king were to move forward to try and stop the pawns. Well, then that wouldn't work as uh, the king would not be able to stop both of these pawns. They would just start marching forward. Um, you know, here, maybe rook to f5 could be played uh, to chase the king, uh, but then the king could just move down here to c4 to prevent the rook from getting behind this passed pawn and trying to capture um, but even if that would happen, um, you know, the other pawn would be able to move forward. It would just be impossible to stop both of these pawns. So uh, maybe the game would continue with the king moving in here. Uh, but now, you know, this pawn would just promote. At least the king would be able to capture the other pawn. Uh, but after queen to e8, the king would move and this pawn would be captured. So the queen uh, would be able to win against uh, rook and pawn here. This queen is just too powerful. Uh, you know, the king would have to move here to protect the rook, uh, but this queen would be dominating with the king stuck here in the center of the board. Um, another example, after b7, instead of rook to f5 maybe the rook would try to stop uh, this pawn from marching forward but then c7 could be played here which prevents the rook of course from getting in front of the pawn as it would just be captured uh, but now after king to d7 attacking this pawn b8 could be played promoting and you know, what does black do here? If the rook captures the queen, then the pawn would recapture and promote again to a queen. And so, you know, white would just be winning. So, uh, if we take a look at what actually happened in the game, um, let's see if we go back to the very beginning. So, in this game, rook to c6, the best move was played, giving check here. And the king moved up to g7. Uh, and then rook to c7 was played. And the game continued with king to f6. The rook back to c6. And the king just moved back. So uh, a draw was agreed here. As the pieces, the king would just move back and forth. Because if he didn't do that. So if we go back to the beginning here after this move which if we take a look at that that's the only move that holds the draw for white 
So rook to c6, checking the king, and we already saw why the pawn cannot capture. So the king would have to move away, uh, and it's a draw wherever this king moves to uh, f5 or g7 or g5, but the king would have to move away. But uh, black does have to be careful because after rook to c7 attacking black's rook, uh, of course, you know, the rook cannot capture or this pawn would just recapture and promote. Uh, but if, let's say, h4 were played trying to march this pawn, well, this would allow king to e6 here. And if the pawn were to just march to h3, well, then white, well, I'll show you here. The pawn would march. The rook would just be able to capture, and now it's protected by the king. So uh, if the king were to move, and then rook to f3 can be played attacking, and if h2 were played, well, now we have this forking tactic of rook to h3, checking the king, and forking the king and pawn. And so uh, neither of these past pawns would make it. The rook would pick this one off, and then the king and rook could work together to pick off this other past pawn of blacks. So uh, this is a good example of if we go back to the beginning, an instance where black is ahead with three pawns to white's two pawns, uh, but with a rook on the board by each side, a lot of these games end in draws uh, because even with this extra pawn, the side with more material is not able to make a, a breakthrough or you know, promote the rooks just do a good job of countering each other and stopping the extra pawn. Uh, so, you know, these doubled pawns here are holding this pawn back, of course, uh, but these past pawns are able to be stopped in time, uh, especially with this tactic of moving the, uh, excuse me, if we go back to the beginning, moving this rook here to c6 with check and just chasing the king back and forth. But anyway, this is just a good instance where you want to make sure that you look for unexpected tactics in the end game. Sometimes end games uh, can seem boring, uh, but if you take a closer look, there may be a hidden tactic somewhere uh, hidden in the position. And if you're able to find that, it could mean the difference between winning or holding a draw. So study your tactics, study your end games to improve your chess. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and feel free to leave comments or suggestions. Uh, thank you, everyone, and have a great day.